The learning analytics architecture and the learning records warehouse within it really is um, platform system and vendor independent. I think as JISC, we are the sector's digital arm. Um, our role is to be interoperable um, and catering for all. Um, and that is one very key aspect of this architecture. Um, one of the things we are doing is working closely with vendors, um, providing solutions with and in partnership with them uh, to the sector to allow the seamless and timely integration of that data into the architecture. The other thing that JISC is doing and is, is something of a new venture as well is we're going into uh, building those solutions ourselves, um, delivering real tangible uh, bolt-ons or plugins to bring that data in. So we are working with institutions and really trying to address the demand of those institutions and those different systems. Um, we've looked at virtual learning environments and working with uh, Blackboard uh, to pull in data there. We've done the same ourselves working with the open source community to bring data in for Moodle um, using a Moodle plugin. Uh, and we're also looking now at expanding that through to specific attendance monitoring systems uh, to collect data from them. The Learning Records Warehouse really is the hub uh, for this system. We've said that we can't do um, we can't do some of the core functional pieces of this learning analytics service without the learning records warehouse and we can't do it without the learning analytics processor. What's important is about you know understanding how data flows within this system. Um, the learning records warehouse will feed um, and create a learning analytics processor which is a piece of software in its own right. Any outputs from the learning analytics processor will go back uh, into that learning records warehouse as a real-time auditing archive of the learning analytics service working in a business as usual scenario. So, so what you've got is all the outputs from the learning analytics processor, be they in a, one intervention, multiple interventions for a student will be stored in the learning records warehouse. Why? Why are we doing that? Well, we want this to be platform vendor independent. So if we have got our set of suite of tools, as we do at the moment, the student app, student success planner, open dash, or the data explorer, they can pick up those different pieces of information all in one place on the learning records warehouse in real time. But also what's stopping other vendors or other you know, universities potentially having their own solutions and plugging it into the learning records warehouse as well. So what's key is, is the way the data flows and we actually keep an audit trail, a historical, data repository of learning analytics activity beyond the predictive model creation, uh, beyond the student data and the activity data that feeds in to make sure that all those software applications actually function and work to spec. One of the strengths of the JISC architecture really is around the, um, the core um, relational database, which is effectively the learning records warehouse or the LRW uh, as we call it. The way we hold student data within the Learning Records Warehouse is crucial um, because one of the key aspects of this is making sure that staff can only see students that they want to be uh, engaging with uh, and that their data is only available to those members of staff uh, that need to see the data as well. So in terms of progressing an alert, for example, from a learning analytics processor through to an intervention and into intervention case management. One of the key aspects of the student data model or the UDD is that it provides a very flexible but yet linked data structure. It allows for students to link to specific modules, to specific courses and specific assignments, or coursework or examinations. So we can actually track what they're on, when they're on that information, you know, those pieces of, um, of, of activity or academic activity. But we can also say, right, okay, which members of staff are linked to their courses, which members of staff are linked to their modules, and actually which members of staff are linked to them as personal tutors. So we make sure that that data is linked, but also what is not linked is therefore segregated and therefore um, the data is secured in terms of who can be with um, and when they can be with, basically. The way we link uh, members of staff to students really is up to the institution in terms of how they're going to manage uh, learning analytics and deploy the strategy internally. Um, it could be that interventions are performed by members of staff who are personal 
you know, kind of personal tutors, or they could be course or module tutors. They may not be any of those, um, but the model is able to link specific members of staff to those students at those different levels, and the UDD describes this in detail. What is key is that the data is held securely and independently per institution.